Welcome back guys. We've got some more work to do on the RM250. By the way, check this thing out. It is coming along just epic. Super stoked on it, but we have some uh, work to do on the brakes. So I've got the master cylinders to finish up. In the last video, we did a bunch of coatings on the calipers, carriers, all that stuff. So we're gonna start out by refinishing these master cylinders. I'm gonna go through, smooth out all of these casting marks here and just give them a super sweet brush finish. Now, before we get started, as many of you know, we are doing a giveaway with this RM when it's all finished up. So if you want a chance to win it, just hit the link down below in the description. First thing I gotta do is take apart the rear master. Let's pull the piston out of it. There's a clip right here that I'm gonna pull out. Now pretty much all the guts will just come right out of the cylinder here. Yeah, that's basically it for the uh, master cylinder. Pretty simple. So on the master cylinders, we'll wanna protect the sight glasses here. So I'm gonna put some masking tape over that. Now, if you're Cerakoting your master cylinders, you can actually pop out these glasses and put replacements in afterwards. Now, I have heard of people doing Cerakote with these in, just at a lower temperature so they don't melt. So I'm gonna start out at the bench grinder and smoothing out some of these bigger castings with the flap wheel. So I got the majority of the big casting marks smoothed out. I'm just gonna clamp her down in the soft jaws here and hit it with a die grinder. So basically I'm using a 180 grit flap wheel here on the die grinder to get into some of these tighter areas. You can see right in here. So the whole goal here is to just smooth all these little dimples, all these markings until you have just a smooth brush finish like right here. The reason why I decided to do a brush finish is they get quite a bit of wear as you're riding. You know, your boots are rubbing against the side here. If I had any type of coating on there, it would just wear off. So I guess it's buffing day out here in the shop. Nick's working on some of these restyle brackets. So they came from the manufacturer a little scratched up. So we're just running through the uh, machines here to smooth them out and get them looking primo. But it's pretty cool when you can use your own products to make your own products. How are they turning out? Solid. They're good. Oh yeah. Got it all smoothed out here. Just got to make it more consistent. You can see there's kind of cross hatching or uh, scratches going all over the place, but just used the one inch rough wheel here. And I'm just going to go in one direction now, across the entire cylinder. And that'll smooth everything out, make it look more consistent. And then I'm gonna finish it off with the finer version of the one inch wheel. All right, the master cylinder is all done. Looking pretty wicked. If you wanna add a little extra sauce on top of it, you can just grab a hand pad and go in the same direction that you're buffing in. And that'll just make it look ultra consistent. It's getting all those little nooks and crannies. Kinda of rebrush it, but yeah, that is looking insane. Now there's one more little thing I need to do with this master cylinder. So you'll notice here, in comparing it to the stock master cylinder, the brake line comes out at a little bit more of an angle out that way. Basically, I just need to trim this little stopper plate right here. If I have this brake line pointed out too far, the brake line will actually rub on the shock. All right, got it trimmed down. Looks like it'll clear just fine now. 
like that will stay right there as soon as I get the guide in. Should be out of the way of the shock spring. All right, now it's time to work over the front master cylinder. Just gonna be the same process on this, but probably will take a little longer because it's bigger and has some really tight areas inside of here, but it should be a lot of fun. All right, front master cylinder is completely done. The thing turned out just absolutely beautiful. Really happy with how this one came out. So a little recap, I used the 180 grit flap wheel to start with. Now, this was mostly just for some of the bigger casting marks like on the front, just to get it all nice and flat. However, you could skip that step and just go straight to the rough wheel on the bench grinder and that would smooth all that out no problem. Also, this wheel will allow you to get into some of these tighter areas as well. And some of the really tight areas, I switched to the one inch wheels. We have a rougher and a finer wheel. This got into all of the tighter areas you see here. Just ran those on a uh, die grinder. Helps to have the extended shaft gets in some of these areas a little bit better. For the really, really tight areas, I gotta give credit to Nick here. He thought of this. We actually cut one of the rough wheels in half. You can see how much thinner that is and that allowed us to get into these areas right here some of these really tight spots but yeah that's pretty much the uh, extent of the wheels I use for this project if you'd like to check them out I will have a link down below now another thing to note it does take some time to get a finish like this I would say I probably have about an hour into each master cylinder and it is pretty tedious work so that's not really your cup of tea then I wouldn't recommend doing it but if you like grinding it is a lot of fun and as far as materials go I use these two didn't even really go through much um, as far as wear on them and for the smaller wheels I used probably about four of these rougher wheels in total and the finer wheel I think I just used one for both master cylinders combined so if you're wanting to clean up your master cylinder but not remove all of the casting marks and casting dimples you can just go straight to the mini fine wheel and it'll get a pretty nice shine so i'm going to put this on the die grinder and show you guys what that would look like so i've got a yz master cylinder here i'll show you what this fine wheel will do on it if we're just wanting to shine it up a little bit So you can see it gave it a nice little shine, but still has that casting uh, texture to it. But really only takes a few minutes just to shine it up. You can see the difference from front to back there. Now for you guys wanting to bring out the shine on your aluminum parts like this, got a pretty sweet deal for you all. So let's head over to the office, show you what I got going on. So we've got a bunch of flap wheels here, different grits, different sizes, also some of these cleaning wheels without the sandpaper in them. So when we get a shipment in, we'll go through and inspect all these and sometimes we'll notice they have a little extra glue or they're just inconsistent and not perfect and I don't really like to sell them unless they are just absolutely perfect. So instead of tossing them, I will be doing a giveaway on all these. So what you gotta do, if you wanna grab one, just head over to the website, primemx.com, head over to the free section and any order over $10 you be able to pick out one of these wheels and just make sure you add it to the cart. Now the key to getting a really consistent look on your parts is to be just really broad with your strokes. You don't want to sit in one area too long or else you'll end up with a bit of a dip. And try to use as big of a wheel as you can starting out. So like with the flap wheel, that'll get this flat surface nice and smooth and then you want to use the smaller wheels only in the tighter spots. And then to top it off, like I mentioned earlier, grab yourselves a hand pad and just go over the part in the same direction you were buffing in, and that'll make a huge difference in the consistency of that brush look there. Now with the master cylinders all done, we're gonna move on to the rear brake pedal. I have never actually pulled the tips off of these before, and it looks like you could just grind the rivets off of it, but I'm gonna pull the tip off of it, sharpen it up, and lay down some Cerakote, and of course, buff out the brake pedal and get it looking better than new. Mm -hmm. 
Should bite pretty good now. So we're gonna try grinding these rivets off right here and see if that loosens up the tip off the pedal. I'm guessing these things will just pound right out. Got my punch stuck in there. Should go? Looks like it. All right, tip is off. Now, if you're gonna be popping a tip off like we did here, you wanna grind down the heads of that rivet as far as you can go and then go a little bit more. If there's even just a little portion of the head on there, it makes it a lot harder to pop that out. So I noticed there's a pretty good size gouge in this brake pedal. I'm gonna need to smooth that out and try to blend it in right here. So I'm just gonna be using a sandpaper roll here on the die grinder. So I cleaned it up pretty good. It's not perfect. Now let's use a rough wheel to blend this side in. Gotta make sure the brake pedal bolt actually fits in here. Oh yeah, that's dialed. So I'll be starting with a rough wheel. This will blend in a lot of the scrapes and scratches. Man, I really gouged this thing up in the vise. Got the pedal all smoothed out. Just gonna take it to the next step with the fine wheel. Now to make it look even more consistent, we're just gonna bust out the hand pad again and just brush it in the same direction. That is looking absolutely dynamite. Now I'm trying something new with Cerakote. I've always mixed it just with a beaker and went by uh, fluid ounces and I'm actually gonna go by weight and so we've got this little miniature scale that goes by grams also got a little shot glass to mix it up in I'm just gonna zero it out so I'll be mixing the Cerakote at a 15 to 1 ratio so we've got 10 and a half grams of the graphite black in there and now I'm just going to divide that by 15 so that equates to 0.7 grams now I know this isn't completely accurate because the density for the catalyst versus the uh, color is going to be different so it's not going to be an exact 15 to 1 ratio but it'll be close enough for a small run like this it's going to add in 0.7 worth of catalyst so basically the more catalyst you add in the glossier the finish will be and the less catalyst obviously it'll be a flatter finish now i need to find a little lid for this i'm just going to use a rubber glove stretched over the top now instead of riveting the tip back on i'm just going to drill and tap these existing holes to five mil. So we're gonna need a 5 30 seconds drill bit for this. It looks like the holes are already pretty much that size. All right, we'll see how this goes. They might be a little bit sloppy. If it's not gonna work, I might have to go to six mil. Looks like we're going nice and straight. So I'll do about a half a turn, then turn it back. Just kind of slowly work it in and make sure you have some lube in the hole right there too. That always helps. So we got one of these tapped out. I ended up just tapping it all the way through. I'm gonna hit this one and we will be dialed. Kind of tough with a pair of vice grips here. My little tap tool broke on me. Brake tip's all done, turned out pretty good, but I pulled a straight up goon move and didn't smooth out the scrapes on it. So didn't really have this thing dialed in, but I think it'll look good on the pedal nonetheless. I found some sweet looking bolts for it. I want to throw some Loctite on these. I don't anticipate taking these out anytime soon, so I'm going to use red Loctite on them. I'm going to have to drill these holes out. What do you think, guys? Not too bad for a crusty old brake pedal. It's crazy what you can do with just a little, little buffing and shining on these things. You going to give everyone an update on the 150? 
150? Yeah, it's coming together good. Let's check it out. Show them what you're doing to it. Well, I'm putting the 2022 plastics on it. The old summer frame, we threw that thing away and we welded two like, tabs on here to um, extend this further back on the bike so we could fit up the seat and stuff. So uh, basically got everything we need to bolt everything together. So should be pretty sweet at the end. Oh yeah. If you guys want to check out what he's doing to this thing, you better subscribe to his YouTube. What's your channel name? Mintworks MX. So All right. Head on over. All right, guys, that is going to wrap up today's video. It was a lot of fun working over these brake parts. Now, I want you to tune in for tomorrow's video. We're going to be putting it all together and getting them on the bike and bled and working. So that should be a really interesting video. So once again, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a share on your social or tell your friends about it. That's how we grow and continue pumping out these videos. So thank you again, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.